What's up guys, Danielle here, NeutralSupport.net. So as somebody who cares about tools, maybe more than a lot of people do, I get asked all the time like, how do I make a toolkit? Or where do I start to make a toolkit? So there's always the easy button of just getting a toolkit. So companies like Pedro's, Junior, Park Tool, they all make professional level toolkits and different degrees so you could get something to start out. Kind of just have like a quick way to get tools and probably have close to what you need. The challenge is, none of these toolkits really have exactly what you want all the time. You're always compromising a little bit to just get kind of what they threw in the kit as opposed to the tool that you want. So it's nice to start with exactly what you want instead of going through that hassle. When I started out, I actually just bought a master toolkit because I didn't want to be bothered by picking out my tools initially. I thought, I'm sure to miss something I'm gonna need. Might as well just rip the band-aid off and buy the master toolkit. It basically kept me going for many years uh, with additions that I made as I figured out what I liked and what I didn't like about certain tools in the offering. But it was kind of a nice thing to just be done with it. That is a big financial commitment though. So if you wanna start out with something else, what we're gonna to do today is talk about the bike tool pyramid. Still remains a mystery to modern archeologists. Let's go. Every good pyramid starts with a firm foundation. So we're gonna go there. The bottom of the pyramid is obviously universal tools. So these are tools that are not bike specific. They are tools in the world that just so happen to be the tools you need to work on a bike. So that would be things like hammers, hex wrenches, box wrenches. Now keep in mind all of this stuff, especially the hammer, is metric. Uh, bikes are generally metric. There are only some classic brands that use standard, maybe some very old Schwinn's and other American made bikes. If you're not working on classic bikes, you can basically just throw that information out. All modern bikes will be metric. Don't worry about that ever again. You're gonna need things like screwdrivers. So we talked about JIS compatible screwdrivers a while back. That's a good video to reference for some choices. There's also an article on the website detailing different choices for screwdrivers. Cool to get a JIS compatible crosshead set so that you don't ever have to worry about that either. Need a few sizes of flathead just for those other applications. Don't use those to pry though or you'll get in trouble. If you're starting out with something smaller, you can winnow it down. So with cone wrenches, you could do something like a 13, 14, 15, 17 pairs of all of those will get you through most scenarios where you will need a cone wrench to adjust a hub. Same with box wrenches, 14, 15, 17 box wrench. That's gonna cover the majority of axle specs that you're gonna need. If you're going into BMX stuff, you might need a 19 millimeter wrench, but one thing that you can always do is instead of buying all the tools up front, you can buy what you think you will need. As you need a tool, just buy it. That's how we really got into some of our more specialty tools is instead of just buying it ahead of time, I would wait till I needed a tool. Then as soon, the minute I needed it, I would order the exact right tool, have it forever. That way you build the kit that you actually need. You don't have tools that just sit around in packaging. I have tools from that master tool kit that I never opened. There's still wax on some of the cutting tools because I just never needed to thread a one inch steerer tube it just, you know, stuff that I just never had to do. So I did spend extra money for convenience and got tools that just, they're still in wax right now, as we speak, nine years later. Some other tools to consider for your common base is pliers, cable cutters, even though cable cutters is a specific tool, it is not a bicycle specific tool. Cable cutters exist in the world. Things like snips, scissors, uh, having an adjustable wrench on hand in case you run into a standard axle or in case you run into a nut that somebody's really boogered up really well. Maybe think about getting a ratchet set if you prefer to use a ratchet as opposed to a regular wrench. And you also need a torque wrench, at least one, but probably two torque wrenches, one for smaller Newton meter, like, you know, I think the park tool split is like three to 13 Newton meters for one and then 12 and a half to 60 for the big one. So if you're using the ratchet style torque wrench, there's that. You can also use a small turning torque wrench for things like stem bolts. Those are usually more convenient. So consider that, but definitely get a torque wrench. And then the thing that sounds similar that we're just gonna sneak in here, cause I definitely remembered it, is Torx wrenches. If you don't wanna buy a whole cool set, T25, T30, T10, actually as I'm listing them, just buy a whole set. You can get a little kit 
that'll have all the ones that you need in it and that'll cover what you run into. A lot of companies are starting to use Torx for their bolts because you have more purchase, more surface area. So you're just gonna run into it more and more. Our second level of the pyramid is common bicycle tools. So these are bicycle tools, but they're so common that they are just as common as the universal tools in terms of what you're gonna do with them. So this is gonna be like your chain tool. So chain tools you use constantly, all the time. Getting a chain tool that's compatible with all the types of chains that you're going to see, or at least two chain tools. If you can't make one chain tool, do all of those things. Typically, 99% of chains will go through the same tool. Just make sure whatever chain tool you're looking at, which you could use the bike tool finder for all of this, by the way, but make sure whatever chain tool you're getting is compatible with the chains that you'll see. Along with chains, a quick link tool will be useful for you to get chains off if they have a quick link. Cassette lock ring tool. So the standard cassette tool will get you through a lot of stuff. That tool is used for more than just cassettes. The lock ring on some disc brakes will be that cassette tool. Chain whip or chain whip pliers. You know, I won't get into that debate right now. You need spoke wrenches for wheel truing. You need a wheel truing stand if you're going to... Uh, let me back up. You don't need a wheel truing stand. A wheel truing stand would be nice, but if you're doing a lot of wheels, get a wheel truing stand. If not, you can make it work. You can do the zip tie on the frame thing or make your own out of a fork. There are workarounds for the stand, but you do need spoke wrenches. So there's about three common sizes. In Park Tool, that's gonna be like zero, one, and two, uh, black, green, and red. Those are basically almost all of the spoke nipple sizes that you're going to see. So a few spoke wrenches will get you through. Obviously tire levers and a pump, a bicycle pump, BB tools. So bottom bracket tools, most of them are going to be in the next tier, but you will run into the standard like external bottom bracket 16 notch tool. And the if you're doing any square taper stuff, you will run into the old style spline tool as well. So there's those two bottom bracket tools probably graduated or moved down to that second tier as opposed to the one up from it just because of how common they are. They come in almost every toolkit no matter what you're doing because they're just so ubiquitous in the industry that you're probably going to need them. That bottom bracket tool is a lot of the lock rings for disc brakes as well. So lots of good stuff. Bumping up to uncommon bike tools. It's not necessarily that the tool is uncommon but that the task that you're doing is generally less common than other tasks. So this would be things like bearing presses or headset presses. So headset, bottom bracket, hub presses. Not using them maybe as much starting out as you will in the future. Eventually you might use them all the time, depending on what kind of work you're doing. But those tools you generally don't have to pull out as frequently. The same with like a headset cup extractors it's specific to headset work. So if you're pulling out headsets all the time, you'll need those extractors. If you're just doing general tune-ups or you know light work on your own stuff, you may never need to take out a headset cup, especially with integrated headsets being more and more common. You may never use a headset extracting tool. In fact, those little spindly things, I think I've used maybe three times this whole year in the shop. So it's really a specific thing that you don't run into as much. I bumped brake bleed kits for hydraulic disc brakes up to this category. There are actually shops that I have met, which I found unbelievable at the time, and maybe I still think is unbelievable, but there are plenty of shops that actually refuse to bleed hydraulic brakes. So I'm bumping bleed kits up to, you know, the level of, if you don't know what you're doing with this tool, you probably don't need it because you shouldn't be doing the work required to make the tool necessary. Bleed kits, you will need two. So you need a DOT fluid one and a mineral oil one. Do not mix those at all. That'll cause all kinds of problems. You need one kit for each. Jaguar actually makes a cool kit for each that's pretty all-encompassing. You just grab a DOT kit and a mineral oil kit and you can basically bleed almost any brake except for the DB8. With hydraulic bleed kits comes all of the tools associated with cutting hoses, putting barbs in, all of the hydraulic bleeding tools will be in this level. It is getting way more common to see hydraulic brakes. So it is something that you should probably strive for if you're going to be a mechanic in a shop capacity or in a professional capacity where you don't know what bikes are coming to you. You will definitely need bleed kits. 
Um, but if you know exactly what bikes you're working on and you're like, Shh, I'm never doing hydraulic brakes ever, it's not something that you're going to run across. But I bumped it up to that third level for that reason. Uh, I also am putting all these brand specific tools in this level. So there are plenty of tools that I did not buy until I saw the thing that I needed to work on and said, Ugh, of course that company made a proprietary tool to work on this. And then I ordered the tool. So Praxis is really good at making proprietary things that you can't work on without their dumb tool, without their great tool. Campagnolo is a great example of having a bunch of tools that maybe an average mechanic will never use. If you don't see any campy stuff, Campagnolo tools are very expensive and you don't necessarily need them. So if you're going to be working on campy stuff, you have to have a bunch of very specific Campagnolo tools. But if you're not working on campy stuff, like don't waste your money buying all that just to have it sit in a drawer. Just wait for the campy stuff to come in. If you start working on it, get the right tools. So all the way at the tippy top of our bike tool kit pyramid is gonna be anything that's considered a specialty tool. So up until now, we're talking about tools that you might encounter just the everyday bike. A bike rolls in, it just needs that thing. Just tuning up or regular service, stuff like that. But the specialty triangle way at the top of the pyramid is what are you focusing on? So you might be the internal hub guru of your area and you need a lot of specialty tools to work on specific internal hubs. You might be a frame builder. You might be a wheel builder that wants to have digital readout for your tensiometer. There's so many specialty areas that the average bike mechanic doesn't even go and doesn't need to be prepared for. But if you are going there, there's a lot, there's a whole can of worms that opens up. So really the tiny top of the pyramid should probably be like a, you know, explosion of direction. There's tons of things you can do. In that specialty tool area, there's also this sort of idea that I have that's, these are tools that if you don't know how to use them, you should not use them. So frame tapping, uh, facing, cutting tools. Those are tools that A, you can mess up the tool very easily and B, you can really mess up a frame if you don't know how to use those tools. So those are things that I consider specialty tools, even though some people might say like every disc brake tab should be faced before you assemble a bike. If you don't know how to use the tool, you can really just mess everything up if you do it wrong. As you move up the pyramid, I think the contents of each layer gets more and more vague because it gets more specific to what you're doing. If you are working on a specific type of bike, then you will know more about what kind of weird tools you need to do exactly what you need to do. That's something that I can't tell you here, but something that you need to think about. So if anything you're doing requires a specialty tool, you install one up EDC toolkits in people's steer tubes all day long and you need the threading tool, things like that. Weird little things that like the average person may never need. I don't want you to be stuck with a bunch of tools that you never use for no reason because that's a horrible waste of resources. You can spend that money elsewhere making more money for yourself if you start conservatively with your toolkit and build towards exactly what you need. So if you came here and you're like, man, I need a list. Look at the contents of toolkits that are already on the market. So look at contents of toolkits that Park Tool puts out or Pedro's puts out or Junior puts out and then actually base what you order on those lists. That sounds like a cop out because it's like, here's a video telling you to go look at something that already exists. I think looking at the pyramid, you can have a basis of kind of what you need. Look at those tool lists, see where they compromised because that's the real problem is that you might get a consumer level bottom bracket tool in a kit because you didn't spend X amount, you spent Z amount and Z amount didn't get you the nicer version of a pedal wrench, it got you the entry level of a pedal wrench. So there's definitely compromises being made in those kits. Analyze, choose what you want. Building a kit yourself is fun and rewarding and it also lets you utilize your space. So hopefully now you feel prepared to build your toolkit. I hope you do. This is a great way to start and as you need stuff, just keep adding to it. By the time that you're done in your career, you'll have so many tools that you'll have my problem, which is just duplicates after duplicates of tools and an inability to get rid of them, which is the actual problem. 
If you found this video useful, you can go ahead and like it. Comment below if you have any questions or suggestions of tools, things that you did to build your toolkit. Subscribe to the channel for more. You can head over to neutralsupport.net. We've got cool swag, other stuff. If you join the site, the Bike Tool Finder actually has all of these tools in it that you can look at the different versions, piece together exactly what you want. You can actually save each tool to your profile, build your whole kit, and then go buy all that stuff. I can't even sell you that stuff through the website. I just give you the information because I like you. I want you to succeed in life, and it's there for you. So, best of luck with that. As always, I hope you guys have a good day.